Earlier today in California, Governor Gray Davis strikes a deal and basically kills portions of Proposition 187. It discourages more people from voting because that, I think that's why we have the attitude of people that there's no, no reason to go out and vote anymore. They should listen to us. It's just it's like a wasted vote. In other words, it feels like a waste to me. Why, why do that work? And then, then cancel it. If it's up to someone um, who has enough power to just disregard the decision or the will of the people, then it is somewhat pointless. 50% of the voters in California voted in favor of this proposition. What happens to the will of the people? Well, the will of the people uh, is something that all of us have to respect. But when the will of the people uh, has been ruled unconstitutional, the will of the people is null and void. But as the people of California would soon learn, Gray Davis killed Proposition 187 because he was part of the Ford Foundation plan to keep it away from the U.S. Supreme Court. a seven-year-long study of immigration headed by Dr. Robert Paul, a sociology professor at the State University of New York. Completed in 1993, the study found many difficulties with immigration, but its conclusions were strange. Rather than changing immigration policy, Bach concluded that America should be changed. In Americans Know More, The Death of Citizenship, Geyer exposes Ford hireling Bach as a, quote, rabid multiculturalist, unquote. What ideologue Bach was saying is that America as we have known it and Americans as we have known ourselves must be changed, not really to facilitate immigrants' progress, but to facilitate the vision of America dreamed up by the activists and the Ford Foundations of the world. And where is Robert Bach today? The Ford Foundation's rabid multiculturalist Robert Bach is in charge of America's immigration policy. He was involved in Citizenship USA, the Gore-run scheme which naturalized more than one million aliens, many of them criminals, so they could vote for Bill Clinton in 1996. He was involved in the planning of the ill-fated IDENT system, which allowed mass murderer Resendez Ramirez to elude detection and capture. Beyond the smoke, there is the heat that the Immigration and Naturalization Service is feeling for letting Resendez get away. CBS News correspondent Jim Stewart in Washington is following that part of the story. On at least 12 occasions, U.S. immigration officials had their hands on Rafael Resendez Ramirez and let him go. Once after being returned to Mexico, Resendez Ramirez actually did an about-face re-entered the U.S., and within three days is suspected of killing two women. Today, INS Commissioner Doris Meisner well, said she had no explanation. What happened in this case is something we're not entirely certain that we can uh, uh, explain, and that's why we're investigating it. In May 1999, Locke announced that the INS would no longer deport non-criminal illegal aliens. Um, I noticed in your list of five priorities under the new strategy, uh, the deportation of non-criminal aliens is not one of the five priorities. Uh, is that correct? Am I reading your five priorities right? Dr. Bach? Mm -hmm. The, it's not listed as one of the priorities. Immigration officer of over 25 years, I have to say that this new strategy by INS will clearly result in any displaced illegal aliens obtaining new fraudulent ID and then obtaining a new job in another meatpacking plant or at another industry or city or state. We had a pilot program going in my uh, county and also in Orange County, California, for pre-arraignment of, of uh, individuals when they come in to screen them to see if they were legally or illegally in the country for crimes committed other than immigration violations. In the first year in the pilot program, we found in my district 67% of those screened were illegally in the country. It passed the House 428 to 2, passed on the unanimous consent uh, uh, calendar on the United States Senate, and uh, with that type of support, the President did not veto it. He did sign it into law. Can you tell me why uh, the, the administration uh, uh, is not following the authorization of Congress on that? Um, Congressman Gallagher, uh, first of all, the, the 
INS, uh, first of all, you're getting a memo. It's on the way. I, I, uh, in response, in the mail? In response, it's being cleared. Uh, it's in response to this. Is it true that you have in some districts reassigned special agents from enforcement duties to adjudicate naturalization petitions? Um, Diverted staff from enforcement to naturalization. I, I I don't know. I'll have to ask, um, and we'll get you a question. Oh, we'll get you an answer to that, Congressman. Okay. On January 20, 2000, the Sierra Vista Herald, an Arizona newspaper, reported that the head of the Tucson sector of the Border Patrol, Ron Sanders, left his job because the INS had a policy of keeping the border open. Sanders, who chose to retire on July 3, 1999, said that the Clinton administration wanted more illegal aliens to enter the United States so they could be counted in the 2000 census. There may be 10 million illegal aliens in the United States. Not only would Bach not remove them, he'd actually encourage more to come. The Ford Foundation's plan to keep the Mexican border open and deconstruct America was well executed by Robert Bach. Mario Obledo was co-founder of the Ford Foundation-created Mexican American Legal Defense and Education Fund, MALDEF. He spoke his mind in 1998. We're going to take over all the political institutions of California. In five years, the Hispanics will be going to be the majority population of the state. He also made the statement that California is going to become a Hispanic state, and if anyone doesn't like it, they should leave. Did you say that? I did. They ought to go back to Europe. The Ford Foundation is using its billions to deconstruct the United States, to erase its borders. It has joined with the radical National Lawyers Guild and the Democratic Party to reach its goal. Henry Ford, a man who helped build America, unknowingly left behind the tools to take her apart. <laughs>